Last week, the Iowa House made changes to the governor's bill on AEAs and special education. The bill, House File 2612, passed 53 to 41. Nine Republicans joined 32 Democrats in opposing the bill. After the bill was changed, the association representing the AEA switched from opposed to neutral on the bill. The Iowa State Education Association remains opposed. Representative Brent Segrist voted for the bill, and Representative Lindsey James voted against the bill. Hear what they said during debate. Uh, well, here we are with the Area Education Agency bill. Um, I think it's fair to say this was on nobody's agenda coming into the session. None of us heard about it going door to door, uh, but this issue was brought to us, and I congratulate uh, Representative Wheeler and everybody else that's worked on this to try to make something that uh, is certainly palatable to move ahead. I applaud the governor for her goal, which is that we need to increase our special ed scores in the state of Iowa, and, and we do. But there's a way to do that, and I think this is a, a way to get to that to that place where we actually need to go. Uh, there has been a lot of good that comes out of this whole discussion. And, and first off, with all due modesty, which we all have in here, I know, I'm pretty sure that after spending 15 years as an executive director for the area education agencies, I know more about them than anybody in this building on any floor of this building. Uh, the AAs do a phenomenal job, and they do a job that is very, very necessary to the children, the parents, and the educators of Iowa. But they can be better, and we need to get them better. And so this is a, a uh, bill now with the amendment that has had a lot of input coming from the AAs and the various education groups, and I'm going to support it. Uh, it gives me some heartburn in some areas, but I think it's a step forward for where we need to go. First and foremost, the task force. I think the task force membership is pretty inclusive. I think those are the people we need around the table. We should have had around the table to start with that will be able to take us and say, how do we improve special education scores? How do we get more efficient with these nine area education agencies? And how do we move forward? And I think the task force will do that. And they'll give us recommendations that we can look at next year and really start to make, make a difference, I think, with this. Uh, in my mind, looking at this, nothing changes for special education in the state of Iowa moving forward. Everything stays the same. The money is going to go to the districts, but the districts will spend it with the AAs, and then the AAs will provide a quarterly report, which they can do, so that districts know where that money is going, even though they can figure that out now. But this will not cut any services for anyone. When it comes to the media and technology and education services, that money is going to go to the districts. It's going to give them more choice. But I think in the end, they're going to end up using the AA services because the AAs are not, I can speak for them in this case, not afraid of what we call sale of service. They will have to have the services that people want. I think our schools, rural and urban, will continue to use, generally speaking, the AAs. And so I think that that is something that is, is very workable. I do have some heartburn with the DE oversight from day one on this when I hear people saying that the DE doesn't have any oversight over the AAs. That's just not factually correct. The AAs are accredited by the State Department of Education each and every year. And if they had some huge problem with it, they could have done that through the accreditation process. The AA budgets each and every year are approved by the State Board of Education. So when we hear that they don't have any oversight, I just don't accept that. Having said that, this does set up uh, some new positions at the Department of Education, which I think is a good thing. Particularly, we're going to take some of the AA staff in each AA and put them under the DE so the communication is better. I think that's going to result in much better communication, much better collaboration between the DE and the AAs, something that, for whatever reasons, has been lacking. And so that part of the DE oversight, I'm okay with. I don't love it, but I'm okay with it because I think it will improve services. Uh, the fear that we have heard here is because of the way this thing was rolled out that I think DE as AA employees were very fearful for their jobs. I don't think under this bill that I believe we're going to pass today, uh, that's going to be the case. Now, if the task force makes some recommendations for some changes, maybe at some point they may have a, a legitimate fear here. But not knowing where this all came from, they were very fearful, so we all got a 1,000 emails. And they were respectful, and I appreciate that. But I think what we're going to do here today is going to give us the right timeline and, and be able to move forward and make the changes that need to be made without affecting the number one thing with GAAs provide, which is uh, special education services. So I'm not saying I love this. I'm not saying it doesn't give me a little heartburn. But I think with the timelines that are in there uh, a year, two, three years out, I think it's a very workable product. Um, 
uh, if it would all go away uh, and we could do this uh, internally, that'd be great, but that's not the hand we've been dealt. And so I think this bill as amended will go a long way to having the AAs have a chance to improve themselves, improve services for the kids and educators and parents of the state of Iowa and eventually be a more efficient body. Uh, and I plan to support it. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I had a uh, really distressful uh, pediatrician visit when my youngest kiddo was 18 months old. And in that visit, I learned uh, that he had missed a milestone, that he didn't ha actually have the right amount of words that he needed in order to um, hit that milestone. Um, and so we were, need we were going to need to get an assessment. And, um, but I was, I was overwhelmed and I said to our pediatrician, we're actually moving. I was in the middle of packing boxes and moving across the country. My husband had got, gotten a job at the University of Dubuque Theological Seminary, where we were going to go plant our you know, young family and grow roots for years and years to come. And um, I was a young mom with young kids. Um, I was very hungry. We had eaten a lot of top Roman noodles, um, trying to get my husband through his PhD process. And um, I didn't know where to turn. And so my pediatrician said, well, let me just help you. Uh, we're gonna figure out where in Iowa we can get your son an assessment. She said, let me worry about that. The next thing I knew, she reached back out to me um, and gave me the phone number of Keystone AEA. I called that number and there was someone on the other line who answered the call of a very scared mom who didn't know exactly what the next step was for her child who she loved so much. When we moved to Iowa and we got settled in, um, Keystone came to my house every single week to work with him. We learned through, uh, through K Keystone that he had a uh, sensory diagnosis. He was having trouble with his mouth. He was having trouble with his ability to eat. And so it needed occupational therapy. And so the, the workers with the AEA helped me and my family through that process. Now, when this bill came up, I went and sat down with my chief uh, AEA director and I had a conversation with him about my experience in the AEAs and about the work that they're doing in families' lives. And then I had an opportunity, not only to learn from him, but to actually go to a childcare center where I watched uh, professional AEA workers do their work with the kids in the childcare center. And then I held a forum in my district and had parents pouring through the door to share about the incredible services and relationships, services that they had received and relationships that they had built with people who were making an incredible difference in their life. And during this forum, there was one mom and she had an autistic daughter and she came up to the front and we had everybody, you know, use a microphone so that everybody in the room could hear. And uh, the mom grabbed the microphone and started to explain her situation. Well, this beautiful, sweet little girl, um, who had a sat through all of these stories um, as an autistic child, grabbed the microphone from mom, couldn't form words, but just started babbling all of these beautiful sounds. Well, mom, she did just fine. She kept telling her story as her child babbled into the microphone. And she said this, when we began services at Keystone AEA, my child, my daughter was nonverbal. The room erupted in laughter because you could see how far this young child had gone from being nonverbal, unable to speak, and now enthusiastically in front of a group of people grabbing a microphone and babbling to her heart's desire. And then after that forum, story after story after story of parents whose lives have been touched. Our AEAs are not failing our kids. They are saving them. Vote no on this bill.